Hi investors, in this video I'd like to answer some questions from my Patreon members. I'm going to go over a handful of charts uh, that they are interested in looking at and a few general questions on investing strategy. And if you want to have me answer your questions via video, consider joining my Patreon link in the comments and description below. So let's jump in here. Um, and remember, this is not investment advice. This is just for entertainment and education. And don't forget to check out my um, partner, Seeking Alpha Premium. I will show you at some point in this video how I use it to follow, to track stocks and do fundamental research on stocks, including these ones. So without further ado, uh, here is COCO, um, symbol submitted to me by William Sanchez. We were talking about it the other day. And here is the one year chart. As you can see, it has a nice uh, uptrend up and to the right. And here we are looking at it via MarketSmith. This is the weekly chart on MarketSmith. So as you can see, it just finished making its primary IPO base and has broken out of the base and is starting a stage two uptrend, which is great. As you can see, the S&P 500 has been trending down and then sideways. That's just a little message from uh, Minervini Private Access. He's just showing his stop losses for the day. Um, but the SP 500 has been sliding sideways here and uh, the chart's been headed up. So that's a divergence that we definitely want to see. The question is, is it overextended? We'll get to that in a minute. Just looking at the sales numbers here, um, single digit sales, nothing to get excited about. And the company was losing um, the income EPS per share has been going backwards the last few quarters, which um, is obviously you want to see a company making more and more money each quarter. But this year, the previous year has been really tough on all companies and many, maybe even most companies have had um, what shrinking income the last handful of quarters. What does this company even do? Manufactures coconut oil and milk, energy drink, enhanced water, protein infused water and other products. So it's a little niche beverage company. Um, beverage companies can be hot. Monster made a monster move. Well, when was that? Maybe the early 2000s. And also just a knee jerk thought would be this. Seems like this could be a buyout candidate by Pepsi or Monster or one of those companies. Scheduled, as you can see, it made a big earnings jump from 0.14 in 2022 to 0.66 in 2023. So that's good. Now let's go back and dissect the chart a little bit. So on the one year chart, all of this is its primary IPO base. And let's draw a line right across here. So here's our most recent. This is um, not really a classic cup with handle because it's so deep here, but a cup with handle nonetheless. Here's your left side, tends to be more volatile, and then it tightens up on the right side. Here's a nice, really well developed handle, and you certainly could have bought right off of this, this huge um, bullish white candle here, and here, um, this red candle tested a really severe low and then it finished near the top of its range. Um, so we certainly could have tried to bottom fish that. Or we could have bought this cheat. Here's a low cheat right here. Um, another great place to buy would be when at the when this handle finished, which would have been right here. And in a handle, you really want to see a couple little shakeouts like this. And notice that it got support on its 50 day simple moving average. That's not just coincidence. Um, fund Mutual funds, rather than buying breakouts, well, they buy breakouts too, but they also like to add shares um, on along the 50 day. And that's why you see support along the 50 simple moving average so many times here and here, for example. So then we see a breakout of the cup. Now you could have argued, um, you know, to buy any of these little tiny breakout, these candle wicks here, but this is really overextended. We got some price compression here. And when that happens, you're usually going to get a pullback 
or at least his sideways move, which we saw here. So if you weren't already in the stock at one of those cheats that I mentioned, then perhaps your best play would have been to do a pullback buy right um, as this candle cleared this little pivot. Now, if you're not already in this stock, in my opinion, it's way too overextended. It's up 34% from um, the top, the lip of the cup, so to speak. It's way above its 50 day. And so personally, I'm just gonna wave at this one and watch it go and wait for it to make a new base. Usually when a stock gets about 20 to 25% above a base, it starts to form a new base. So I would just patiently wait and watch for it to get tight and slide sideways or drift down um, in you know a little wedge pattern of sorts and wait for it to get close to the 50 day and then when we see a bounce uh, near the 50 day we could buy that or when it breaks out of a new cup or tight area let's go to the next one <clears throat> all right this is SoFi um, James Bradley Lopez was asking about this one and as you can see this is just coming out of a downtrend and this stock it says operates as a fintech company that enables customers to meet financial independence to realize their ambitions this is a, a one of the many cases where investors were seduced by attractive fundamentals and when the price chart was telling them to sell if you, if you look at the fundamentals look at these eye-popping sales plus 53 plus 50 plus 58 plus 83 you've got a nice accelerating um, sales figures here and the amount of money that the company is losing has been shrinking it's supposed to go from a loss in 22 to to a profit in 23 so fundamentally those fundamentals are good but um technically it's telling a different story so i really um virtually never bottom fish this kind of thing because we've got all these trap buyers think of the hundreds if not thousands of investors who bought on the way down and are now sitting on a big loss what's going to happen as the price comes up they are going to sell at break even or near it and thank their lucky stars and that's going to cause volatility that's going to instead of having a nice smooth uptrend you're going to see a lot of chop a lot of oscillations and if you try to control your risk with really um, tight stops as I do it's almost well not impossible but it's very hard to stay in um, on an on a volatile uptrend like that now if you're already in let's look and see what do we do if you're already in this stock so if you held this for a big loss I think you need to promise yourself a uh, never again you need to um, promise yourself that you're gonna sell at say 10 percent um, loss or less and then hold yourself to those to that promise so this never happens again the good news in my opinion based on the strong fundamentals and the price action here this stock has probably done sliding down there's no dividend so there's no reason to hold while it's going sideways um, here's the October 13th low in the general market and it looks like it actually lagged a little bit and created a new low you got a little bit of a double bottom here this is an even eve double bottom we can draw that in if you want to there's one hump here's the other hump and certainly you've got a resistance line here around 825 and this was kind of the junk off the low rally that we saw in a bunch of beaten down stocks at the beginning of the year so in in essence this looks like a stock to me that's going to slide sideways for um quite a while probably weeks maybe months i would not be interested at all in this stock um buying it um at least until it gets above 825 here and we definitely want to see it in a in a clear uptrend the 200 day is trending down slightly the 50 day is starting to come up we want to see the 200 day in an established uptrend if we look at coco see this nice uptrend we want to see um, everything moving up the 50 day moving up the 200 day moving up 
the price moving up. We don't see that at all with SoFi. So do you hold it? That's a, that's a decision only you can make. There's no dividend. Um, you know, you're in a lose-lose situation. If you're sitting on a big loss, you're either going to sell it and lock in that big loss or you're going to hold it and drift for a long time waiting to get to get to break even so um you know only you can answer that but i certainly would not buy this um until it got above 850 and until it was in a stage two uptrend and honestly even then you still got so much supply above here i'm i'm gonna wait and hold off and buy stocks that are closer to their all-time highs so don't have a bunch of trap buyers okay so karthik had a question on how to correlate between volume and price action this is a complicated topic i actually have made a few videos talking about um, interpreting volume and i'll try to link uh, one or two of those or if, if you go to my channel and you do a search under volume some of those will pop up but i'll try to remember to to link a couple of those maybe in the comments section but uh, so there's a couple things to think about. So in essence, you, you want a stock to get tight in price action and make what's called a pivot, ideally of less than 5% here. And then you want the volume to get really quiet. You, Minervini uses an analogy of the um, water getting wrung out of a towel. The water is the sellers. And when all of the sellers are done selling when all the supply is done coming to market then it just takes a little bit of buying to move the stock so often what we see is um elevated price volume elevated volume on the left side of a base as all those sellers get shaken out and then when it makes a handle when it makes in essence a pivot it quiets down so you want to look for quiet price action and quiet volume and if you look right before this big breakout on February 12th I believe see how quiet the volume was that's an indication that the stock is getting ready to break out now you don't jump the gun and buy before it breaks out um, but you get as close to the pivot as possible when it breaks out so that's one of the big things another th another thing is you want to see high volume out low volume in so when a stock is moving up you want to see big volume and we see that here see these blue skyscrapers that's good the stocks moving up and there's big buy volume coming into the stock and then you want to see um, low volume low volume out meaning when the stock comes in you want to see volume um, be quite low so if you look see this little natural reaction here where it ran up and then it pulled back look how um, high the volume is on the upswing and then when it pulled back look how quiet uh, the volume is so even though the stock came in a fair amount that really wasn't um, a whole lot of shares coming to market and that's the sign of a healthy stock that's um, pretty much that's all I want to say about that right now then on a when you have a breakout the bigger volume the better because that indicates institutions buying you want to say ideally you want to see big volume over multiple days we're not seeing much of that right now because a lot of these breakouts are retail investors not institutions but when the market heats up we're going to start seeing some real elephants jumping into the pool so to speak and that will be reflected in the volume all right max daniels asked about pi he said it's at the top of his buy list uh, impinge this is in the semiconductor space the semiconductors have been uh, really strong thus far this year and this is the monthly chart on market smith ipo in 2016 here is your ipo primary base and it does look like it's in a nice um, stage two uptrend there's no trapped buyers over here which we like to see and it's been going up while the market's been going down certainly we like to see that divergence looking at the weekly chart let's see that provides radio frequency identification solutions for identifying locating and authenticating items that seems like a strong um, high-tech industry and we can see the companies making money with losing money in 2020 
and now it's scheduled to make a dollar fifty no dividend nice sales nice sales trend we got plus 17 plus 27 plus 51 plus 46 and large numbers in the EPS growth so fundamentally this looks really good uh, EPS comes out in a couple weeks let's look at the daily chart and see if there's a buy point on this thing all right so one thing I noticed right away is that this this is one of different stocks have different personalities this one is definitely getting support along the 50 day by the institutions and you can buy along the 50 day and that'll work until it doesn't right we learned that in 2021 we've got a little symmetrical triangle forming here let's keep an eye on that you had a little bit of a, a the beginning of a base and then it blasted off into space on earnings I bet that's probably earnings usually when you see big gap like that sometimes it's news but it's probably earnings and we see volume quieting down which is kind of what I just talked about that's an indication that supply um, is almost finished coming to market we saw a pop and squat here so indicative of um, this difficult market we've been in we've been in so I like this what I would probably do if I were going to get into this stock is I would wait for it to break above this upper trend line and this um, symmetrical triangle and I'd probably play it safe and wait until near the end of the day and make sure that it um, closes above this line and doesn't do another intraday reversal like this now there's no free lunch um, the risk in doing that is you know it might break out 10% or something and then it's got overextended but I, I'd be willing to take that chance so yeah I would probably I probably do that I would buy maybe half position near the end of the day when it broke above this symmetrical triangle and then maybe put on the other half the next day when it starts to extend you've got just a little bit of trap supply here and here trap buyers which may cause it to break out and then slide sideways but fundamentally uh, and technically this stock looks really good and the 200 days in the uptrend 50 days in the uptrend yeah this looks good let's add this to my focus list and by the way I've been using seeking alpha premium for a long time I've been using seeking alpha for probably 20 years and I made a little portfolio of the stocks I'm going to talk about today and what's really cool about these is you it tracks them in real time so if you're if you have a desk job you can have this open watch your stocks go up and down which might not be the best for your mental health but um you know if you want to keep close tabs on your stocks you can do that and then you can read articles of fundamental analysis down here below you can look at the latest news on these stocks and you can dive in deeper and there's all sorts of great fundamental tools here's valuation growth performance ownership profitability the list goes on and on so if you're not aware of this I would encourage you to look at um, seeking alpha premium link in the description and the comments section okay Susan Hornbuckle asked about SNEX here's the monthly chart on market Smith Stonex group in the finance investment bank space interestingly this doesn't seem to be affected by the banking meltdown must be in a slightly different industry here's the long-term chart uh, and the last gosh 10 years or so it's been a good long-term investment and looking at the weekly chart here this company is making a ton of money 10.60 dollars per share in 2022 no estimate out for 2023 definitely had a weak sales quarter last quarter prior to that numbers were strong and it, we've got double digit um, income growth which is good no dividend but certainly fundamentally um, this is a strong profitable company provides risk management foreign exchange treasury securities act commodity trading services let me turn off the um, alert thing on my phone once definitely I like to buy uh, profitable companies without any trapped buyers on the left side of the chart 
Let's look at the uh, chart. This is on stockcharts.com. This is where I do my annotations. So here's the one year chart. And, you know, drawing in lines is always an art. This is actually making an, kind of a trend channel, isn't it? So here's your upper trend line. Lower trend line is not working perfectly, but maybe we do something like that. And as you can see, uh, it's getting support off of the 200 day here. So if I were looking into this stock, into buying the stock, so here it did make a base and it did break out and the breakout did work and made a pretty nice move, but it didn't really give us a low risk entry point. Um, there's just wild gyrations and breakouts and reversals. It didn't give us any sort of handle, any sort of pivot to get into. So at this point, I would probably be patient and catch it on a bounce off of the 200 day. I wouldn't set a buy limit and buy it when it hit the 200 day, but rather I'd wait to see it bounce like right here or right here. Confirmation, because I always want to buy in the direction of the trade when the stock is going up. We do see some volatility contraction, which is really good. So we see, um, let's make that big so you can see it. Large, medium, small. So if this continued to tighten up like so, then we could buy it above 104. That would be plan B. And um, another member, I always mispronounce his name. I think it's Sid Hutt, asked me what broker I use to short. I've used um, E-Trade. I've been using E-Trade since 1996. Had great customer service with it. It's one of the biggest um, brokers and safest. Uh, they, they used to have $20 commissions on buy, when you bought or sold a stock. And as you know, most of these brokers have a zero commission. So yeah, I use E-Trade. I stay away from hard to borrow stocks because the um, borrowing interest rate is quite a bit larger. So you have to get, you have to short stocks uh, fairly early before all the, the other masses join you. And the real plus side to shorting is you can make a lot in a hurry. Stocks take the stairs up and the elevator down, as they say, so you can make um, big gains to the downside in just a handful of days. But um, when you're long a stock, the most you can lose is 100% of your money. When you're short a stock, the most you can lose is unlimited. And in theory, you can go to sleep and wake up the next morning and the company you're shorting has been bought out and the price is scapped up for 300%. Then you're on the hook for that 300% loss and that doesn't happen to the long side. So we need to be really careful when we're shorting. Uh, Mark Minervini, two-time US investing champ, he rarely shorts individual stocks. He almost always only shorts the indexes, the, the SPY or the Diamond or QQQ. And then you don't have to worry about those big um, gaps, you know, and a, a, a giant day in the SPY would be a 5% move. Whereas in the individual stock, it can move, you know, 10, 20, 30% or more in a day. And let's just look at one more, I'm just checking these stocks. Um, looks like the market is really pretty flat today, which is fine. We're just finishing out the bottoming process. So we move into a new bull market. So this is also from Sidat. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. And this is on First Solar. Some of the first, the solar companies have been doing really well. And this is definitely one of the new market leaders. So like many solar companies, uh, when they IPO'd, there was, um, what, a manic buying frenzy. And then they slid sideways for years. But the last couple of years, they've been trending well. And as you can see, we see this nice divergence of the general market going down and sideways and the stock going up Re 99 relative strength. That means it's outperforming 99% of the market. That's really good to see. Manufactures and sells solar modules for residential and commercial markets. And wow, what a spectacular jump in income from um, making negative 0.40 in 2022 
to seven dollars a share in 23 to an estimated thirteen dollars a share in 2024 we want to see huge um, breakout numbers because when earnings of a company goes up dramatically what does the price do that's pretty obvious i don't even need to tell you right looking at the numbers uh, sales creeping up every, every company had a hard year the last few quarters so fundamentals um, future expectations mean a lot more than past fundamentals right now it did lose money the last couple quarters let's take a look at the yearly chart here's the 10-year chart so here's a breakout of this multi-year um, base it really didn't give us much of an entry point here the handle was woefully short and this was very extended this would have been pretty dangerous to buy up here in hindsight it would have been easy to say that we could have bought the breakout on earnings day here and set our stop right beneath um, the opening price these gaps will fill maybe 50 percent of the time or so so that's one way we could have played that another thing we you can do is after a big breakout like this you can wait for it to um, bounce off support at the 50-day institutions that miss the breakout will often buy on the 50-day and as you can see um, the stock curled back got support on the lip of the cup so we could have just waited for it to break the 50-day and come back above which would have been right there now do we dare get in this right now in my opinion uh, you know it's just too overextended although that's going to change it's been stair-stepping its way up and it's just in this tight uh, consolidation area we're still pretty high above the 50-day now certainly you could have made a play for it you know you could have bought it um you could have bought it yesterday uh, coming above this pivot but then you might be trapped going sideways for you know days weeks maybe months and there's no dividend there's no reason to be in a stock while it's going sideways so personally i would wait for it to make a strong bounce off of the 50 day with the idea that the institutions are buying and are going to power it through these near-term trapped buyers or i'd want to see it quiet down and i'd want to see the volatility contract as we as we talked about in the last uh, chart and just wait for this volatility to dry up like so and then buy on a breakout above 220. now looking at this big gap up we saw a huge um this is probably institutions buying and they probably are going to buy again um, when this breaks out of this consolidation zone or they're probably going to buy along the 50 day as i previously explained so that is about a half an hour that's where i'd like to wrap it up uh, again if you want me to answer some of your questions um, then consider joining my patreon link in the description and comment section below appreciate your time and if you have any comments or quick questions on these stocks then uh, just let me know in the comment section and i we can zip you a quick response in the comment section okay uh take care everybody